in the collision between emerging technologies and fundamental human needs, my contention is that's where you can see the future unfolding. That's where meaningful new trends emerge. I will put one caveat on that quickly, and we could do a whole session on this one day. Look, is that framework about to break down? Certainly, it's being profoundly challenged by the idea, which feels ever more imminent, that we are about to merge with our technologies. And for the first time in history, we simply won't be the same humans anymore. And I've spent the last like, sort of 10, 15 years just looking out to the world out there, trying to make sense of where we're at now and crucially where we're heading, what, what our collective destiny, our collective future looks like. And really that takes two forms these days. I write, as you know, I write this newsletter, New World, Same Humans. And that's a kind Which is of- such a great name. I love that. Thank you. World, Thank you. Uh, I think it's I think even 40 years uh, hence, when all this is done and dusted, it will probably still be my proudest achievement. The name, the name, which is, of course, a reference to same shit, different day. Um, so New World, Same Humans is a kind of ongoing diary of my attempts to make sense of, of, of what's happening and where we're all heading. Um, and then I, off the back of that, I speak to organizations, you know, in various forms. I, I engage with large organizations who want to make sense of where, where this is all going. And that can range from, look, very, very short term changes in consumer behavior and consumer mindset, all the way up to the sorts of things you're more interested in, you know, long run, long term mega trends, structural decade on decade shifts, emerging technologies that are reshaping what the future looks like. And that 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 is enough to keep me busy. So what kind of framework do you use to understand this world? Because everybody's spinning to figure out what framework can they use? How, what's your mental model here? Yeah, I mean, my fundamental mental model is, is, is encapsulated by that title, New World, Same Humans, which is essentially, look, when we try to make sense of the, of the future, of what, where we're heading, we know that right now, the primary force reshaping our shared future is technology. We're in the middle of a technology revolution. There's a tendency to fixate on the technologies themselves, on the shiny latest thing, and we all know what the shiny latest thing is right now, we'll talk about that soon. Um, when you view technologies in isolation, that's very limiting. It, it doesn't really tell us much about much that's meaningful or useful about the future. Simply to say, you know, there's going to be AI. There's going to be even more AI in the future. I'm trying to look at the collision between these emerging technologies and human beings. And that gives us a very powerful anchor because there's a huge amount of chaotic, apparently random change out there. No one's in control of it. You know, no one's no one's no one's steering the big ship that is technological change. It's just unfolding. Human beings fundamentally are motivated by a set of needs that don't really change decade on decade, even century on century, you know, value, convenience, security, status. I'm looking at the collision between those two things. In the collision between emerging technologies and fundamental human needs, my contention is that's where you can see the future unfolding. That's where meaningful new trends emerge. I will put one caveat on that quickly, and we could do a whole session on this one day. Look, is that framework about to break down? Certainly, it's being profoundly challenged by the idea, which feels ever more imminent, that we are about to merge with our technologies. And for the first time in history, we simply won't be the same humans anymore. It, it, it won't be a case of this, this stable entity called the human being with a fundamental set of needs that we, we understand that we've lived with for you know, thousands of years colliding with technology. Technology will have turned us into something new. And look, I'm I, okay. I'm prepared. I'm prepared for my chat for my for my framework to be challenged, and I'm prepared for there to be a big second uh, chapter of the newsletter that uh, addresses that because I think I'm reluctantly being persuaded that that is what is about to unfold, that the nature of the human itself is about to change, which is very what, hard to make sense of. What the hell do you mean by that? Because pe people are trying to get their heads around what's happening. What, what do you think yeah. 
when you talk about the nature of humans changing? I mean, look, two, two, two big technologies emerging that look as though they are about to turn us into something else. And of course, we have to be very careful when we talk in this way, because we tend to, and I'm guilty of this myself, we tend to talk about technologies impacting all of us equally. They won't impact all of us equally. They won't turn everyone into, into something other than the humans we're used to. But they may turn a very small number of people at first into something other. What are these two technologies? Well, you know, look at what Elon Musk is doing with Neuralink and others are doing the same sorts of things. Are we about to put chips into the brains of human beings, you know, very simply that allow them to um, to interact with computation, with computers, simply by thinking about it? If we're about to do that, and then if you combine that with, you know, cloud-based access to incredible machine intelligence, is what you have left at the end of that the same old human that I like to, to write about, the same old human colliding with technology. Not, not really. I think you've, 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 you've created a cyborg. You've turned human beings into something else. The other big technology, and we again, we can talk about this at length, that's about to do something like that is CRISPR. I mean, I've been writing in the newsletter, you know, genetic technologies. I'm talking about the life sciences here. I've been writing in the newsletter about CRISPR for a long time. Just a couple of months ago, an absolutely astounding new research development, an evolution of the CRISPR technique that is now being called PASTE that allows you to essentially cut and paste much larger amounts of genetic information into the genome. So instead of sort of tinkering, you can, you can significantly alter the human genome in a cut and paste fashion. And this is incredible. And on multiple levels, it's just brilliant news because it means you can, you, we can now start to look at doing things like editing out cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is, you know, it is manifest across a complex number of, you know, a large and complex number of genes. We can start to think now about cutting all of them out and replacing them. But look, what else are we going to cut and replace? I wrote a couple of weeks ago about a Pew Research survey saying, what was it? Somewhere between 30 and 40 percent of Americans would consider genetic ma manipulation of their child if it made the child more likely to get into Harvard. So, so, so the idea that, you know, genetic enhancement, genetic manipulation of the human genome will be whole, held back by this tsunami of sort of moral disapproval doesn't doesn't look it doesn't look like that will hold water you know but people unsurprisingly i mean that's where you're, you you know that's where it does tap back to the same old humans people relentlessly seek advantage seek advantage for their offspring self enhancement advantage to our offspring these are eternal human impulses so look it's still a useful framework for understanding how these things are going to play out but long run are we heading towards a future where we've changed ourselves, we've changed what humans are, I used to be reluctant to accept that. And it, I, it's still hugely complex, hard to make any practical or moral sense of, but reluctantly I'm starting to concede that, look, yes, we are. Some kind of great divergence is imminent, where you have Homo, you know, 100,000 years ago, two, three, 400,000 years ago, you had various different species of various different lines of the human family. We've had an unusual situation for the last 100,000 years or so, just one, just one line, Homo sapiens. Are we about to diverge again? This time that divergence will be mediated by technology. We've gone very philosophical very quickly. I know, but these are the questions that people <laughs> actually are trying to think about. We hope you enjoyed the video. At Real Vision, we help you understand the complex world of finance, business, and the global economy with in-depth analysis from real experts. Join the revolution at realvision.com.